uh, start the afternoon sessions for today. Uh, we're going to start off with Doji, who's going to talk about making GCC cleaner. Um, so, hello everybody. For those who were at the uh, ABI buff, it's me again. And for the others, here's my name. So I'm going to talk about uh, address sanitizer and thread sanitizer in, the, in GCC. Um, so the, uh, I guess the, the plan of the talk will be quite straightforward. Uh, so yeah, address sanitizer. Uh, I first uh, heard about this thing um, last year at um, Cauldron where um, two uh, people from, um, from Google, uh, they're not here, they're not is here. it? Not yeah. here. Um, you know, talk about, you know, presented the stuff and, and, uh, and it was uh, interesting to see that they actually uh, started uh, doing something um, about it in, in, in GCC. Uh, at least it, it was for address sanitizer. And well, I got very interested and along with uh, Jakub and uh, and um, Wei Min, but he's not here today, is it? Is he? Uh, Wei? Wei? Okay. Okay. And also David um, from Google Xinjiang. Um, we started to work on, on, you know, um, improving the initial support of of address sanitizer in in GCC. So, well. I guess I should start <laughs> by you know, explaining a little bit what it is, even though I guess everybody knows here in the room. But OK, address sanitizer is a memory error and detector, uh, which is, unlike Volgrind, based on you know, instrumented, instrumenting uh, memory accesses um, statically you know, at compile time. Uh, and uh, at compile time, then, it you know, it instruments the code, um, it instrument each memory access so that um, to check if, you know, those are, you know, um, correct. And uh, there is a nice runtime library um, that, by the way, we share with uh, the fine folks of LLVM. Uh, um, the library is actually maintained in, uh, in LLVM, and, and we have a copy of it in, in the GCC tree. So whenever there is an error, um, I'll, um, lib sanitizer you know, just you know, print a nice message about it. And to do that, uh, it does many things. First, it you know, um, replaces um, the malloc and free functions. Uh, and uh, it mar marks the, uh, you know, address of uh, the memory we shouldn't touch as, as such. So, it, you know, it poisons uh, the, uh, the, 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 the memory regions uh, we shouldn't mess with. So, you know, let's get into the details a bit. So suppose we have a code like this um, that, you know, uh, loads um, data from uh, a pointer, through a pointer, the instrumentation, okay, the idea of the, you know, instrumentation we'll, we'll have, okay, the instrumentation that GCC or um, um, Clang will do is this one. So we'll just test if uh, the uh, address is, is valid or invalid in this case, and if it is invalid, report an error. <coughs> Otherwise, just go ahead. So. The way it, 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 it does this is quite, quite easy, I mean quite, quite smart and quite straightforward at the same time. Uh, the address space of, of is, is divided in two parts and the first part is, you know, the, the normal, um, um, how can I say that, the normal uh, address space the application can use, you know, the address space of uh, the memory the application can use. And the rest is the place in the memory where uh, the information about um, uh, whether we can, we can you know, access that memory or not is placed, you know, the metadata. We call that the shadow memory. The smart thing, in my opinion, um, 
here is that you just need you know one eighth of uh, the entire memory you know to encode uh, the the metadata about, metadata about it basically for each eight uh, for each string of eight bytes of uh, memory uh, the 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 information about you know its validity is just encoded in one byte so it's this saves uh, a lot of memory right so and it's pretty straightforward the way it is done uh, basically uh, a byte in a shadow memory can have, you know, uh, nine different values. Um, either we can say that um, all the bytes are accessible, then uh, the 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 value of, of the shadow memory, uh, the shadow byte at that point will be zero, or we say that all the eight bytes are not accessible. The value is uh, this. Or we can say that the value represents uh, the number of bytes that are not accessible. I'm just waiting a bit so that you guys print it. You know. Okay. So the is poison function. You remember? You remember? I, I was you know, showing this here. Uh, this function is quite is implemented quite simply so we just for an address uh, if we want to know if uh, accessing um, you know stuff at that address is valid or not we just get the shadow uh, the shad the address of the you know shadow byte uh, for that you know address and then we just check if um, you know the memory at that place is poisoned or not, or, or not. So this function here looks like this. The point here is just so that you can say, see that, you know, doing all this thing are it's is is quite um, easy in terms of uh, the complexity of of you know operations that are done. It's just you know and you know addition subtractions. You know it's pretty pretty fast. So. In practice, uh, the kind of errors uh, we're catching now are, you know, things like out of bound, you know, detecting out of bound access on global and stack variables. And uh, for global variables in GCC today, the way it is done, pretty straightforward again. We insert, this is Jakub's doing. Uh, he's here. Uh, for uh, global variables, we insert, uh, you know, red zones uh, between, you know, between between them, and of course, inserting this means that we go into the shadow memory of, you know, of 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 the red zone and say there that this memory region is not accessible, right? Uh, and there is a constructor function that will be called when the process starts, right? The, the, the process were instrumented. And that inst uh, constructor function tells um, the runtime library about you know, where each global, uh, global variable is, the size of the global variable, and stuff like that. For stack variables, it's a kind of similar uh, scheme, but in a more involved way. We insert red zones, okay, different types of red, red zones. We insert a red zone at the beginning of uh, the stack of the function, and then another one between each variable slot on, on, on the stack of the function. And at the bottom of the stack, we insert uh, another red zone that is a bit special. This one, okay, of course, all those red zones are you know marked or poisoned, right? So when there is an access there, we we can we, we can flag it and this last red zone is interesting because it contains um, metadata for for, for, for for the runtime uh, things like you know the name of the current function uh, uh, you know the place you know the slot the index sorry of each of uh, the variable slot their size and things like that and this can this is really interesting or 
uh, I'd rather say important to, to get like things like uh, accurate you know error messages and things like that so uh, what do we instrument basically at the gimbal level yeah because all this is done at the gimbal level there, there's some RTL stuff as well for uh, you know um, the laying you know laying out the global variables and their red zones you know making sure they're aligned and you know these kind of things this is done at the RTL level but the instrumentation part is done at the gimbal level so here uh, we instrument you know uh, all the uh, load store um, gimbal statements uh, we also instrument things like you know built-in memory access function calls. You know, these are not necessarily um, expanded, um, you know, as you know, as you will think by, by the compiler. So we, we need to, to have special treatment for them. And, uh, you know, these built-in function calls, um, you know, it's me or? No. Sorry. No, no, it's not. Okay. Uh, there are things like um, STR LAN or you know, uh, uh, the atomics stuff or underscore underscore sync functions, you know, this kind of uh, built-in memory access function called. And there are tricks uh, we used here uh, because actually what we're doing in, in, the, in, in many of these functions is accessing not only one address but a region, right? And if you don't do tricks, uh, things can get pretty slow pretty quickly. So, for instance, for OSTR LAN, what we do is we just instrument the beginning and the end of, you know, the, the, the region. And, and to do this, you know, we need this, the N, you know, the, the, the result of OSTR LAN. So, we actually use the address of where that result will be, you know, in the, in the, in the uh, instrumentation code. So, it, can, it, it was uh, interesting. There is also an optimization we did uh, to have things um, reasonably uh, fast. Uh, I should have changed this example, but anyway. For instance, suppose you're accessing a memory region twice. Uh, mm -hmm. th there is a typo here. Uh, suppose you're, you're reading the, the memory at this, uh, located at this you know, pointer, and you're writing. So here is the typo. You, right after that, in the same basic block, you're writing at, at that same place. We shouldn't instrument the, sa the, the second access, right? And so this, uh, this um, optimization is uh, implemented. So all in all, it makes for, you know, the, the result is uh, pretty usable, uh, in my opinion, even though there are many other things we could do. So, I think what needs to, to be done now is, you know, like always, improve performance. To do that, uh, one of the things we're thinking about now is, you know, okay, the way things are done now is that for each memory access, we, you know, uh, we just put all these instructions. So if if uh, if the access is valid, then blah blah blah, and you know these kind of things. It will it will be nice to introduce uh, a built-in like this one. That will um, that will be called uh, instead of expanding you know the uh, uh, expanding the uh, instrumentation at that place. Teach the compiler different compiler passes not to you know. <laughs> not to optimize this built-in out, right? And uh, and then um, and then put the ASAN pass, um, you know, higher in the, you know earlier, so that more um, GCC passes can see, you know, this thing and optimize it, you know, um, as they can. And then also introduce a new pass that will generalize the. Um, you know, the optimization I talked about uh, earlier about the adjacent accesses. What do I mean by uh, generalizing this thing? I mean, for instance, we could say that um, if um, a basic block um, 
dominate. Okay, in a basic block, you have uh, you have an access to a memory region, and that access dominates other accesses at that same uh, memory region. All those um, you know accesses dominate you know, you know that are dominated can be um, you know don't need to be um, instrumented. You get that? Unless there is a function call, you know, in between, uh, you know, that can do, yeah? Uh, so, <coughs> not actually knowing the damn thing about the pilot, really, but uh, the obvious thing that occurred to me in my previous mm -hmm. life was, um, couldn't you just early, you know, rewrite every pointer access uh, as if it were, uh, you know, a call to a function to do the access, and that function is marked with pure cause one of those attributes that means it doesn't refer to global state, just what it point, what the arguments point to. Then wouldn't and then expand that later. Optimization right. would you know be able to CSE that. Yeah, that's basically the principle of this thing. Okay. And but I'm just wondering why you need to do anything special as opposed to just if you just like early did something that you know. I could even imagine if I did a source code transformation, say, you know, that early, uh, to replace every pointer access with a, you know, accessor function. If that accessor function is marked as whatever that attribute is that says only refers there's, there's to there's the for a store, function. there's no existing attribute. Oh. Yeah. What, what the built-in would, would and do? Yeah. If it reads the memory, then it's not, or if it stores the memory, then it's not pure. Yeah, yeah, for, for instance, if, yeah. if it's just the check and you have you have the store and the check check before that, then what do you do with the return value? Yeah, yeah. there is that. And uh, uh, talking about but special things, yeah. then we would just optimize it out because not, nothing uses it. Mm. Talking about special stuff as well, this built-in, uh, we will need to teach the vectorizers about this thing, so, uh, you know, to support you know vec you know vectorizers vectorized accesses and you know these kind of things so uh, yeah I think okay we think this really needs doing uh, okay I should have used my little dongle uh, and uh, of course keep up with the new features uh, you know with uh, that co that are you know coming up with uh, the uh, is and implementation and LLVM uh, for instance this one you know uh, detecting uh, the use of addresses, you know, that are escaping their their scope when they're you know encapsulated in 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 in, in a scope. Okay, this kind of things, and of course we have we 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 can you know uh, be proactive and you know propose new stuff. Uh, there, are, you know, some ideas uh, f you know floating around about um, you know proposing new. Uh, yeah, new features. So, uh, I don't know. Do, do, do you guys here have some ideas of you know um, sanitizing features uh, that will be uh, interesting? To yeah. So, where are you today with, uh, with respect to LLVM? So um, feature parity is pretty much. There's yeah, some, well, we, we don't, don't have this. We don't Scope checking. We don't have uh, the there, um, constructor, destructor, or the or the, yeah, attribute, yeah, checking attributes. And, and to, we are not that uh, the tunable as the so You mean the yeah, command line stuff? We don't want to. Yeah. Just yeah, too much, too much tunables, too much. The final So today, the last, the last. Tested, I did personally. We were something like, you know, uh, 15 to 30 percent slower. But on some tests, we were faster. But it was perf. But <laughs> uh, uh, no, 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 no. If I, no, no, marketing, marketing. In some tests, we were faster than <laughs> <all> of <them>. you. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> but, Seriously, I don't. I, I was. I as always. I only looked at the cases where we were slower. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, the but performance for 
instance, the vectorizer thing is, is important. Yeah, exactly. That's right yeah. Now we don't vectorize anything. Yeah. Basically, anytime you have access, uh, access we we at instrumentation for, then then it means yeah conditional check and branching somewhere mm -hmm. and yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Did you try compiling GCC, for example, or some program and, and see what the net performance, not, not the comparative performance to s some other sanitizer, but just what would be the kind of ballpark performance impact of using this? Oh, uh, yeah, the, 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 the tests I've done uh, on, you know, reasonably, you know, I, I maintain a debugger front end for GDB. It was, I, I was like testing, you know, it was at worst twice as, you know, slow compared to Volgrand where it is five time or from five time to, to, to me it was, like I couldn't even, you know, it was, you know, snappy enough, for me, but yeah. Um, so, Korsky, who is the, the ASAM uh, original author, mm -hmm. Chrome team, and he for a while he was running an instrument at Chrome, and he would almost it, it's it's usable. Yeah, he would almost not notice. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, same for me. But Except when I time things, I realized it was you know uh, to time Except slower. All the yeah. When the error is detected. yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. Have you bootstrapped GCC with us? Uh, no, not me, but. <laughs> Yeah. That yeah, many people did. So I, by the time I was like, at, you know, going to try that, I was like, oh, they did already. So I just went to fix my bugs. And <laughs> but yeah. Uh, uh, do you have uh, uh, a check-in for complex accesses, for example, for stranded loads and utilization of gathering? For? For stranded loads. Oh yes. So vector. No, today no. Uh, but that's one of. You know, that will be one of the goal of the thing I was talking about here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> to do, to do. But you're welcome to. Yeah. This might be hard to answer, but because you don't know anything about UPC probably, but just assume you had this other set of pointers that needed to be monitored. Mm -hmm. Can you give a scope or an idea of whether that would be possible and how much additional infrastructure might be involved? Maybe a way to think about it would be if you use something like address qualifiers in an embedded application, you'd need to maybe segregate those, have two sort of like a kind of a bipartisan. It seems like the instrumentation would be as largely the same. You just need essentially a I don't completely different runtime. I don't, yeah, I don't see why it wouldn't be possible. So that's, so I'm probably missing something. <laughs> so, um, but yeah. Apart from the runtime part, I, I don't, I don't see why it shouldn't be possible. I don't know. I should probably think about, you know, the details. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Please so go what ahead. What about supporting more targets? Oh, that's something. Uh, uh, well, it's it's okay. I think most of the work the, the work in that. For that is in the uh, runtime library, most of the work. Um, and some people have started already. I mean, okay, today it's mostly x86 um, and, you know, friends. But yeah, there's PowerPC, ARM, and yeah. Well, on ARM, I've got various issues with this, actually. Maybe we can talk about this one. Yeah. Uh, basically, if I'm running some tests under the test suite, it just fails, but if I try and reproduce it also, it just so I'm not sure what's going on. I had something like that on the Debian stuff as well, and it was related to uh, resource, you know, some resource management stuff. Uh, I needed to add it to enable more, I don't remember which uh, kind of resource, but yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. So, but anyway, yeah, we should, yeah. But I mean, people are doing that. I, I mean, are, are, you know, adding support for their platform. And from my point of view, the, most of the work is done in the, uh, in the runtime uh, library. Okay, we do have stuff, you know, like choosing uh, the, 
where the shadow memory, okay, memory layout stuff. Yeah, where the shadow memory starts, you know, things like that. But, you know, from uh, the instrumentation point of view, there is not much to, to do there, yeah. Well, except for you do require one thing, which is something that's not mentioned, is the, like, the stack being uh, growing down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, a little detail. Well, yeah, the, the, the frame pointer, pointer yeah, but you know, it's not really well, frame grown down, downward stuff. Yeah, Fra yeah. But, uh, for the frame pointer, you need it anyway for a stack protector. So yeah. if the maintainers care, then they really should have it at least optionally or <laughs> Or as I, I think Richard Henderson said. Everybody should, should, yeah. should do it the, the one way. And uh, yeah. Jorn? We like uh, uh, to uh, uh, have the random keep track of which alias sets have particular piece of memory is supposed to belong to and then to check any access with a compatible alias set. We were talking about yeah, that. We, about we that were exactly. We were talking about that yesterday. <laughs> so it was. I didn't want to get into that, but you know, the uh, we. Were, it was here in the, you know, killing features. <laughs> but yeah, it's you know doing. That's not that's, that would be a separate library. So yeah. Again, it, it can be under the same switch. Uh, sanitize mm. something, but it needs to be a different library which will have different shadow, shadow memory and. Yeah. yeah, and uh, to from the some way how to encode the alias in, uh, alias set stuff so in the infrared yeah. can be merged by the runtime library from all the compilation units. Another thing that would be useful is if you could make the program uh, invalidate a piece of memory so instead of initializing something to zero because where well, data flow is just well, uh, for this kind of stuff, I think ASAR already can do that. You just, uh, there are library calls where you uh, can poison some memory. If you want, yeah, the runtime. So, yeah. If you know the address of the thing you want to poison, then you can. That, but it's a library call. But yeah. Uh. So, for example, you know, allocated pools. You know, has anybody? That maybe this is an application question. Has anybody added some of these calls to like Chrome or something where they have a pool alloc? I don't pool know. I don't know. I think we need to move on to the second yeah. half of the talk. Yeah, okay. So uh, we can answer those questions at, at the end if I... So, Thread Sanitizer. Thread Sanitizer, okay, is a data race detector for C, C++, and Go uh, programs. Should change my LaTeX uh, sources. Uh, and... Uh, <laughs> it's interesting. Last last year, when uh, during the talk, I, th there were like uh, at this point it was uh, quite interesting. Th th there were a lot of uh, Greek letters, okay, which was m to me much more understandable than Russian letters. But <laughs> <laughs> but it was you know that was it. I was like totally lost, and uh, I think now I understand this thing a little bit. But um, I will try not to use Greek letters. So I won't be really precise, but the idea is to get the idea, right? So how does uh, Thread Sanitizer operate, basically? For that, we need to, to know uh, what you know, a data race is for, for, for that tool, basically for, for it runtime. For that, they define many concepts, many, many, many concepts. Um, we will just define a few here. So for the library, for the dynamic, uh, for the runtime library of uh, Thread Sanitizer, um, they define events. An event is a memory access at a certain point in time in a certain thread. So 
and, and there can be different types of events, like write events, you know, read events, uh, synchronization, okay, lock events, for instance. So just keep that in mind. And then on those events, on the set of events, uh, they define uh, uh, happens before relationship. That happens before relationship means, actually, I think, uh, what it should mean. So it just means that you know, if, if, if something happens before something else, it means we observe the something before the something else. For instance, if two memory accesses happens on the same uh, address in a thread, in the same thread, there is uh, one that happens before the other, right? In the same in, in the same thread, but it's it's a partial relation, relationship. So there can be things that you can't for which you can't say if one happens before the other, right? So the definition of uh, the data uh, data race for the tool is this one. We have, you know, if, if you have two um, events that are not um, ordered by this relationship, I mean, for which we can't say that one happens before the other, and if one of those events is a right event, and if uh, the locks, you know, hold, uh, sorry, held on, on those on those memory locations, uh, I mean, there is no common lock, sorry, held on those memory location, then we have a data race. Does that make sense? Without the Greek letters? <laughs> the paper is, is quite interesting. I was re re, uh, uh, reading that in the play, and it was like, OK, I'm jet lag already. <laughs> so, For the tool, the data, the memory location, you mean? If you, if you what do you mean by data? Two stores yeah. write the same data, and it doesn't matter which order they have. The sure. The, the tool doesn't care. Yeah, exactly. It will tell you that. But that could be an optimization. We can talk about that. Oh, no, no, no. No, no, sorry. The tool doesn't care. It's, uh, it will flag it as a possible data risk for you, yes. So, but we'll get to that. There could be. For, for, for these kind of things, you know, there could be some optimizations. So, so that is all well and good. Uh, I mean, but from the compiler side, uh, okay, the, all this happens in the runtime library, right? For the compiler side where we, uh, where we do instrumentation, we actually don't care about this. <laughs> uh, the library, the runtime library just give us provide us with, you know, um, functions like this, underscore, underscore, tsun read, you know, the size of the access. And in the compiler, what we do is that when we see a, a memory access, we just call this function <laughs> with the address of the thing. Boom, done. It's much, much, much simpler than, I mean, the implementation uh, is much more simpler than um, for ASAN, for instance, even though the theory is like, boom. So uh, it's quite nice. Um, but that is because the runtime does everything for us, right? Uh, so what do we instrument today in GCC? Basically, all um, memory accesses, including uh, you know, those uh, you know, sync, you know, atomic uh, functions. This is pretty important, I think. There are some optimizations. We don't instrument, for instance, obviously, <laughs> um, you know, accesses to local variables which address don't escape. The, there can't be any data risk there, right? And we don't instrument accesses to global constants, obviously. And there is many things to do still. Uh, I mean, you were talking about, okay, it's not this, but it reminds me of this thing. Like, 
we, do, we shouldn't instrument redundant accesses a, bit, a little bit like for ASAN. Basically the same thing. Yeah, so for instance, if a read you know, happens before a write to the same location, we don't, I mean, we can just skip uh, you know, instrumenting the read. And like for ASAN, we should do, you know, introduce the uh, introduce a built-in that is known by all the passes and you know, the whole thing, the, the the whole thing I was talking about, you know, for for ASAN. So, and of course, like for ASAN, monitor what, you know, is going on on you know the uh, LVM implementation, and that's pretty much it. So. Questions? Now is the time. Just the same generic question, what's the current comparison of the LCT and the LVM? The nice thing, okay, for us, is that <laughs> TSAN uses a lot of memory uh, because, uh, you know, there, there are all those events, at least one event per, I mean, time, uh, you know, you know, you know, one events per yeah, uh, how can it time step, and and per access, and for each of those events, we store a backtrace. Uh, yeah, you know, backtrace in case something happens there, you 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 want to this. So a lot of memory. Uh, so, you know, we're pretty much on the same. I mean, <laughs> saying optimizing doesn't matter. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not saying that. I mean, for for the, for the memory stuff, but for uh, the runtime. The last tests I did, it was something like uh, we were, I mean, the, the slowdown, it's pretty much like, a, um, pri uh, like uh, for LLVM, actually. Um, the slowdown is something like we're, uh, it's less than for, it's less than for, uh, for, uh, sorry, for ASAN, around two. But the, for memory stuff, it's like we're consuming to, from five to, uh, you know, five as more as, you know. Well, I mean, that's a runtime issue. So yeah. Share yeah, exactly. So, yeah. But as far as, like, uh, semantics you implement, it's all the same as all. Yeah, I, as far as I can well, tell. The yeah. only thing the compiler can do is are, are the optimizations. Well, yeah. Uh, avoid some calls, which are jammed. So on the, the ASAN side, uh, sometimes we generate more checks than LVM because we actually don't force the built-ins. Not we don't disallow built-ins to be expanded in line. Yeah. Because we, uh, we expand the checks in line, and even even in cases where we actually end up uh, calling the library function, which checks it again. 